you know, I, what, what a great day for us. Um, we did a lot of things well. Uh, it's great to see the building almost full, uh, which is terrific. Everybody was into it, and uh, that helped us, gave us some momentum. Um, played a better first half. I know everybody wants to talk about that. We've been good in the second half most of the year. Um, and so it was good to have a lead in halftime. Uh, we weren't terrific in the first half, but we kept guarding. And uh, Sticks hit the back-to-back -back threes. Uh, which got him going and kind of loosened up the defense a little bit because uh, they're a heck of a defensive team, extremely well coached. And, um, you know, so that helped us. And I thought, I, I thought we locked in and guarded. Uh, they're a big, strong team. Once we stopped taking shot fakes and once we ran back post defensively, um, transition wise, uh, we were much better. So, um, didn't rebound as well as I'd like, but can't have it all. And, um, uh, but step in the right direction. It's the best we've played in, in a while. This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on capitalsportsblog.com and terptalk.com the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call the Jackledge Law Group. We have decades of experience handling truck crashes. We recognize issues unique to trucks, including black box findings and DOT regulations. We find insurance others don't know exists. Some think the only coverage is with the truck, yet we've found millions more insurance with the broker. It's important to collect information, find representation immediately. Truck cases are complex. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, Call 855-BIG-DOG-1 right now. Mark, uh, defense in the first half, it looked like Sorrell. Was a big yeah. Uh, he sort of, sort of set the tone yeah. at the top of the defense. And in and, and, and the second half, also, where they made that little run, the defense sort of took charge. What, what is it about this team that, you know, when you can play that well defensively, where does it come from, and, and, and what, what, you know, how, do you, how do you get that? Yeah. Well, we've been a good defensive team all year. I don't know where we are. We didn't guard um, Brian as well. I thought they shot a good percentage. Um, but I think we've been a pretty good defensive team all year. We've been a pretty good rebounding team all year. Today we got out-rebounded. Um, but we really locked into the scouting report. and. Um, we really wanted to play great post defense without fouling. And once we stopped going for every shot fake, um, which we talked about, um, you know, our guys locked in and we were better. So we're a good defensive team. And, um, you know, we're only playing two young guys now, Chol and uh, Dante. Dante was terrific and Chol is going to be terrific for us um, as timing comes back. But we have a lot of veterans out there and they locked into the scout report. And, they know what the importance of these games and what lies ahead. But the bottom line is, you know, it's been it's been tough. There's been a lot on our plate. We were ranked really high. I'm not sure we were ready for it. I'm not sure we deserved it. I don't think we were having any fun. Okay, I think I think today the guys had fun. You saw them smiling. You saw guys playing more relaxed as the game went on. So uh, a lot of positives, you know, moving forward. It's a long season, but to step in the right direction and a lot of things that we keep talking about just trying to enjoy because it doesn't get any better than this in their lifetime and you know, playing college college basketball for Maryland at this, at this level. Um, you mentioned the post defense. Was that kind of a pleasant or reassuring thing to see, especially kind of with the front court and, and what James was able to do? Yeah, it, it, it was good. You know, Dante plays as hard as anybody I've ever coached. So uh, he was giving up six inches, but he was trying and he was battling and he was fighting. Uh, down there, um, you know, Ricky Lindo is a good defender. Ricky had a big block in the first half, which was good for us. I thought Ricky gave us really good minutes, and Sorrell, that's taken away from that question that you asked. Um, but we have good defenders, and uh, we have to guard that way because our offense has been so inconsistent. We have to guard that way. Now, tonight, we were much better with transition into taking a good shot and not turning the ball over. And it's something we've really worked on. We had 41% loss of ball in Seton Hall after a stop. It's ridiculous. So we've worked on that. Today we had five turnovers and we took the starters out. Um, so that's a step in the right direction. We play with much more poise, but we have good defensive players. And Sticks didn't protect the rim until the very end and he was good. And, you know, Joel gets, you know, gets into the groove with him. I think we have good rim protectors. Ricky can do it. But Ricky can guard one through five, you know, for us. And, 
It's just him playing with confidence at the other end that we got to keep working with. Mark, sorry. The, the, the calculation that you've got there where you go to the four guard lineup the un, roughly the under eight in the first half, about the 10 and the the second half. And I think you've said before that's probably your five best guys at this point. Yeah. But how do you kind of make that calculation as to when you go to that as opposed to sticking with a more conventional yeah. two forward? It's just a gut feeling and, and I wanted to do it earlier in the first half, but then I thought Dante had really good second stint minutes. And um, a lot of it had to do when they subbed and, and, and what they were playing. And, um, but it was really good for us in the first half. And then I think under eight to about the three minute mark, it was good for us again. So, you know, it's, if you just work, you can play close defense. And um, we have guys willing to work. And I you can't take away from what Aaron Wiggins did defensively too, but it all starts with Daryl for us, when Daryl locks in. You know, I've been really on Eric Ayala to guard better. I thought he guarded better uh, today. Um, so there's a lot of guys that played better than they've been playing. And uh, so it showed today. So it's just a gut feeling. I don't know. And we'll see as it goes on. You mentioned that it seemed like the team was playing a higher level today than it had in a while some of the before Illinois. At what point today did you just kind of realize that, okay, my guys are you know, back playing at that high level? Well, it's just one game, but it started in practice. We've been we've been good in practice. Um, we haven't been going extremely long. We haven't been going twice a day, you know. Um, and I think the two a days are over, which they'll be happy about. But um, helped us lock into the way that I want to play the rest of the year. And we've changed the way we play. Okay. And I had to make that change. And uh, it's going to be really good for us moving forward. And I think we'll just keep getting better at it. We don't have a lot of offense in yet. Um, the team has changed, obviously, um, so we'll continue to add offense as we go. It's a long season still, but um, practice really carried over today, so it's good. It's a good feeling. It's, 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 as a coach, you just want your guys to play their ability and, and have fun when they're doing it. We're not going to do it every night, and it's not going to be easy, but today we did it. Mark, uh, it, it took Anthony a little bit while to get a scoring going yeah. today, but uh, he got it going in the second half and finished with six assists, no turnovers. Yeah, well, what did you see from him today uh, as a leader? Yeah, he's been terrific. And he did a great job guarding Green. He's, a, I think, a really good offensive player. And I don't know what he ended up with. I know he got some late. But I looked at Anthony about the nine-minute mark when it was still like a 14, 12-point game. And I said, don't let that kid get going. Don't let him get going. I thought Anthony did a great job. So the 6-0 is amazing. He missed some shots in transition that he's been making. Uh, he made him in the second half, made a tough one, one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So he's making good decisions. And Anthony's all about winning this year. He's a whole different player. I keep saying that, and I think you guys see that. And when you have a senior that's playing that way, it gives you a chance to, to keep getting better and have a chance to be really good by the end of the season. Why is it good at this stage to show up a happy game like that and to sort of get bounced around a little bit yeah. and get some fouls go open? Maybe not have to, you know, get one dunk at the end, but to, just to see what it's like to play a big game. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how much he played. Um, you know, and he was mad I took him out there to get Josh in. But Josh has been working really hard, doing everything I said. And I told Troll, I said, yeah, I had a foul every 27 seconds out there uh, today. So I was teasing him. It was fun for him. And um, first in, he was really lost offensively. And then he was much better. Um, he kept it really simple when he was in the game. He was much better offensively. But defensively, I know he's going to be terrific for us uh, as the season goes on. So he's happy. He's pretty much pain-free. Gets better every day. He, he did every rep in practice on Thursday. And it really he really struggled yesterday in practice because it was just muscles and all that. So we rested him a little bit yesterday. He was a little better today. Um, Thursday was terrific, so it's just about trying to get him the right reps to where he can not be too sore and get better. But, um, you know, I think depending on game and how well he's standing out of foul trouble and how well he can remember all the plays and things we're trying to do, he'll get more minutes. Last one, please. Coach, continuing on, Joel, uh, from him, given the depth situation and also how he's having to come in for meaningful minutes. How has he been able to handle the pressure and be able to step into the role that he's in? Hey, he didn't play for two and a half years. He's so damn happy. He's <laughs> just smiling. He's having so much fun. 
And uh, he, the only time he got mad was when I took him out at the two minute mark. I had to stop him and, and, and hey, let's get a reality check here, buddy. You know, you're playing in a Big Ten game. And uh, so you get better every time. He had a smile on his face. You know, I'm just so happy for him. And if you, if you know the story, what he's been through, and to get to this point, it's terrific. And everybody loves him. Fans love him, coaches love him, his teammates love him. So uh, we just want the best for him. Thanks, Well played next time.